When it comes to Asana, I'm a firm believer that all the tools, resources, and people needed to do the work should all be in the same place that the work is happening. That's why as much as we can, I'm always encouraging my team to think before creating another rogue Google spreadsheet or Google Doc. Think, how can we do this in Asana? Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that. Welcome to Asana Solutions. My name is Marquis, I'm your host, and you've landed on the number one page on YouTube for all things related to Asana, process improvement, and project management. Spreadsheets and Google Docs, though are so necessary in many different environments and workspaces, there are times when we just overcomplicate things and we go outside of the tools that we actually have and are paying for and investing in and feel like we need to still do it the way that we've always done it. A tool like Asana is fantastic and helps teams to not only collaborate, but be able to see and be on the same page, right, when it comes to projects, updates, planning, whatever it may be. Nothing pains me more when I see a spreadsheet with rows and columns and sections and filters and, you know, everything is right there. And I'm thinking, why isn't this in Asana? What are we missing here? You have a tool, it's a work management tool, but we're not using it for that. So today I'm gonna to show you one example of how you can take your Google spreadsheet, you can transfer all that information into Asana to start using the tools you're already paying for, you're already investing in. Let's jump in. Okay, so I've got my trusty spreadsheet pulled up here, um, and I've also got just a blank project here in Asana. We're gonna go through this and do it right from scratch. Um, I'm gonna put some timestamps in if you do wanna skip ahead, but the first thing I always wanna do is just kinda look at what we're dealing with and just get comfortable with you know, transitioning from a method like a spreadsheet or a Google Doc and putting it into Asana. And I always encourage my team, like we need to be thinking, whenever we're doing anything, before we create another rogue doc or another rogue sheet, we just need to think, how can I do this in Asana? And then everything becomes so much easier. So whenever we have different columns like this, I always think of these as just custom fields, right? So approved. Um, if you know Asana, if you've been using it for a while, if you're on the premium or the business option, you know that there is an approval workflow where you can, you know, request approval, you can request changes, you can re you can reject changes as well. Um, topic, working title, that's obviously our task name. Keywords, I'm going to create a custom field for that. Description, that's going to go right in the description in the task detail. Content type, we might have to get creative and create something different primary target and so on and so on. So this ideation sheet is basically just like uh, we're creating content and we just wanna bundle that into different types of video content, blog content here. Um, I think we got a couple eBooks in here. Um, yeah, eBooks and infographics and checklists. And so we're just gonna go through all the different types and just start to think about what does this look like in Asana? Can I make this into a custom field? And the answer is, 99.9% of the time, yes. And so we have a primary target, um, which is like our audience that we're going after, the stage that they're in, links. We're not gonna do all of these because I think once we get started, you're really gonna get a really good understanding of you know what this could look like for your organization. So let's flip over. First thing we're gonna do is actually look at the, the first custom field we think we're gonna need, keywords. So I'm gonna come into my project, Click on customize. I probably don't have anything here. I'm just going to search the library first. Let's see if I have anything in there. It's always good practice, not keyboard, <laughs> keywords. So there we go. We have one called keywords already. I'm going to pull that in and there it is as a custom field. Let's see what kind of field it is. It's a text field. Great. That's exactly what we need. Um, then we're going to have description. We already have that content type. Let's search that. So another quick way is if you are on the main view, if you just click on that, It'll take you straight to the custom field. You don't have to go to customize and drop down content type. Content type. Yep, that looks great. I have no idea what's inside of it, but we'll see. We'll see soon. Primary target. Let's pull that one in as well. Let's search and see if we got a version of it. Primary. Okay, so we don't have a primary target. So I'm going to create that one first. Primary target. So. Uh, you have a couple options here. You can either do text field, but I think it's easier to just do a multi-select or a drop-down or a single select, sorry. And so in this case, I like the flexibility of multi-select. So if a piece of content is for you know two 
of our um, we're going to be creating like an ebook. I think there's an example. Yeah, we're creating a webinar or a webinar slide deck, or we're doing an info graphic and a blog post, then I want to make sure that we we can select both of those for that kind of content. So I'm going to go multi-select here and let's just look at some of our, our ones we have here. So we have checklist, ebook, infographic. Let's start there. Checklist, uh, ebook, infographic, I'm just pull in a few more. Webinar, blog post, video. I think that will be it for today. Webinar blog post, video, that might be it. I'm not gonna add it to our library right now because I don't think I need it you know, ongoing, but um, if we did have like a form or something we're submitting or we wanna create other projects like this, we'd wanna add it to that library. Uh, and there we go, I'm gonna create that field. Let's just pull in a few more fields we might need. Um, primary targets. Uh, that's a good one. You're all watching this and you're like, Marquis, you're making a mistake. We actually just created the content type. So let's just do that again. Let's just rename that content type. There we go. And now we're going to create a primary target and I'm going to <laughs> double check. There we go. Let's create the real primary target. Um, hope you got a good laugh there. Um, and yeah, let's do multi-select here as well. So um, primary target, we have agency Amy. I'm just going to copy that, put that in there. Um, Department Hero Herald. I don't know who came up with these names, but uh, let's go. We have Enterprise. Emily is our third, I do believe. So let's select like that. And we're going to capitalize that. There we go. We got a multi select. There we go. Uh, let's pull in Stage Tofu Mofu Bofu. Great. Let's just do the stage as well. Uh, do we have a stage? Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. So let's call this stage. We're going to call it tofu for top of funnel. And then we're going to go mofu, middle of funnel. And then we're going to go bottom of funnel, bofu. Um, there we go. And yeah, I'm going to do multi-select as well, just so we have the option later on if we do need it. And then I'm not going to do anything else here. I think you kind of get the idea now. I'm just going to put in a link because I always like having links um, in a standard project. So we, of course, have links. What kind of links do we have? Evernote link, social media link, LinkedIn link. I just need a regular link. There we go. Perfect. So now let's pull in our first one. Let's go at the very, very top. Um, we're going to go to checklist first. So. This is an approval task. We're looking at this row right here. So this is gonna be our task name. And let's just pull this up here. We're gonna put this in as our task name. Um, in this spreadsheet, there weren't any assignees or were there, um, am I looking at it? Proposed by, maybe that could be the assignee or maybe that could be another multi-select custom field. But uh, there's also, are there any due dates here? Uh, no due dates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove um, this, not remove it, but hide it from view so, because we don't really need it right now. Okay. So we got that right there. I pulled that over our keywords. We got process audit checklist. And then in our keywords, I'm just going to put that in right there. And so if you did have more than one keyword, right, like that's just a custom field. We can come in here. That's one. We can do this. We can do keyword two. Keyword three, keyword four, right? We can do something like that as well and they can all be there because this is just for a campaign. We just need to be able to visualize exactly what's going on. I'm gonna pull in my description, simple copy and paste. This is a great way to like transfer stuff if you already have these, right? If you're starting from scratch, then I would just suggest just doing this like this from the very beginning. Okay, so our content type is gonna be checklist. But this is where it can get really good. We have a checklist and maybe we're creating this for a webinar. So we need a graphic on the webinar. We need to talk about this on the webinar um, or we need to make an infographic and a checklist or an ebook. There we go, that's better. I'm so indecisive today. Um, and then the primary target, let's just see who is gonna be coming um, to our website to download the checklist and ebook, um, Department Hero Herald and Agency Amy, maybe. So now we have two of each, and that's why I like the multi select over the single select because you can be really flexible with it um, and you're not boxing yourself in. Um, 
There we go. Oh, another mistake. Why didn't you guys tell me? There we go. I'm going to remove that one because we already had it. I don't know what I was thinking. When you're like in the zone, you don't really notice what's going on. I just kind of like go into the matrix when I go into Asada. We're going in. Um, there we go. And stage, this is going to be a top of funnel offer because it's just a quick download. And then any links, this could be a link to, you know, a graphic or to the landing page. Right. There we go. So there we are. Like, it's really that simple. And then we're just going through. Let's do one more here. Um, I'm going to do an infographic. So let's do this really quickly. And we'll take it one step further. There we go. Keywords. And this is what? Um, infographic. And let's do it for another person. Infographic. Let's put in our description. Let's do it for our um, enterprise, Emily. And this is a bottom of funnel. We want to sell something to Emily. Perfect. There we go. So now let's let's take a look at this. I'm going to actually close these off right here. I'm going to pick just one of them for each so we can see this. And now what's really nice is we have this you know, in front of us and um, we're actually going to go one step further before we change this. We're going to set these to approvals because if you remember, that's what we really wanted to do. We wanted to send this to our client and get their approval on it. And so we would assign this to our client right so let's just say it's me there we go and then the client's going to know that we're seeking approval on this item and when we have it approved we're obviously going to click that approve if we need changes requested we're going to request them there or we're going to reject that idea so if we did have a long list of items to go through just like this then we would um you know improve create this workflow so that it's really easy for everyone that's involved. So now I'm going to take it one step further because when it comes to organizing everything, you want to make sure that um, visually it's well understood and you can keep track of everything as you, you know, get more um, tasks and things to approve here. So we're actually going to, get, going to go to sort and then we're going to sort by our content type here. Okay. So now we've sorted quickly by the checklist items and the infographic items. If we did have another option in the multi-select, it would be in two different sections. And that's why I removed it because we don't really need that in this case, but we can sort things that way as well. And if we did have just single select options, sorry, let me, let me put it back and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go back to due date. So now I want to actually create the content types as different sections. So I can go like this checklist tab N makes a new section infographic tab N and what's another content type that we have webinar. There we go. Webinar. Beautiful. Okay. And now I'm just going to move these in to these sections like this. And of course, you know, you can watch my other videos on rules where if content type checklist is selected, it automatically goes to this section and so on and so on. You can really make this really work for you and be as automated as possible. Now, if we did want to sort by, uh, what are we content type? We can do that. Okay. And then it really just puts everything together in one nice, tidy little package. And we can finally do away with these, these spreadsheets. Ooh cringe. We can finally do it with the spreadsheets and, you know, get everything in a sauna, get everything visible to everyone on the team and just work better and work smarter. So don't overcomplicate it. Use custom fields, use tags, use um, the resources within Asana, use the workflows to speed up your work and be more efficient. If you liked this, as always, like, subscribe, share with a friend who might find this helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're doing in Asana. Let me know how much you really want to get out of spreadsheets. And you know, if you have any questions on how to do so, drop me a comment, send me an email. We'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.